Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some exciting news coming from the folks at Blender Foundation. So, the last time we talked about some cool stuff coming, we did mention something that has to do with the sculpting and today we are seeing a very impressive layer texturing design article that will probably change the way you texture with Blender. Actually, this isn't like a new news as they did mention it as part of their strategic targets for 2022 and if you guys remember, we talked about it. At the time where we talked about the strategic topic for 2022, some of the things that were looked at as agendas included the application templates, override, physics, and texturing. And the idea for the texturing is combining the node-based texture and mask painting to create a better and a non-destructive painting pipeline for Blender users, as well as a proper brush management and performance update. So this seems to be happening as they've just released an article that deals with the layer texture design. Now overall, this project is geared at upgrading the 3D texture performance and also a planned set of tools and features that will be coming over to Blender. The very first thing which you get to find here is the texture data block. Now this evolves around the texture nodes and also a list of channels it outputs. A typical set of channels for PBR shading which includes the base color, roughness, metallic and also the normal map will be included in this. This system is not going to be limited to that as there might also be a couple of custom output that might be used in terms of brushes and also within the geometry nodes. Moving forward there is a texture layer. Now to explain this we might need to open up this mockup. For the layer texture, this with the idea that the texture properties of the texture data block shows within the texture layer stack. And if you take a look at what we have here, you can see that we have the rust, the scratches, and also the capping. Now procedural textures can be dragged and dropped from the asset browser into the layered stack and at the same time you can bring in images and attribute layers can also be hand painted. This makes a lot of sense because most people will like to create their own procedural textures and save them in asset browser for later use as I kind of see where this would actually make a lot of sense. Now the layers will work more like what you have currently in Photoshop and Substance Designer, the blend modes, the mask, the reordering, hiding, merging, all of that stuff that you get to see in Substance Designer right now and also in Photoshop will probably be coming to this. Selecting an image texture or color attributes with enable painting in the 3D viewport and this is going to be a bit life changing. Now from the layer stack all the way to the layers down to the mask right here. You can see right over here we have like the attributes and of course this is a mock-up but it sort of looks like a potential thing that we'll be getting and right over here you can see a node graph. This means that the node graph alongside with the mask can work directly on the layer. There is this tiny button here which hypothetically might take you over to your shader editor or over to a node editor that might be created as a custom editor for this. Now with that said, there is also a very interesting section that deals with nodes. And we're looking at the texture node. Now the texture layer stack actually corresponds with the node graph and the way they are looking at this is for you to be able to create more complex textures and also node setup that cannot be expressed or created within the layer stack. Now this reminds me a lot of the Agama materials that we've looked at on the channel and also Mari. Now if you actually played with Mari, you'd know that these tools, they not only have the layer stack where you can go back and forth and texture things directly on layers but you can also switch over to the node section and edit some things on the fly. The same thing happens with a couple of other texturing tool and it's very interesting to see that the folks at Blender Foundation are going towards this route. Now this is also going to come with a couple of nodes and some of these nodes are going to tie with the geometry node the shader nodes currently and probably we might be getting some more aesthetic nodes and some of the common nodes that we'll be seeing includes the mats the mix the image texture nice texture and so on and so forth we'll probably be seeing some shader nodes like the geometry the texture coordinates and also the attribute now this goes on and on and on as the way they're looking at this is there might potentially be a new socket that simply combines all of the textures that you'll be painting within the texture nodes and link all of those into the materials now for for those who have no idea how this actually plays out, I think it makes sense to show you guys with the materials right here. So if at the end of the day you're done doing all of your texturing, you would be able to transport all of that baked stuff or even the procedural ones to your base color, the roughness and also the metallic. Right now they're looking at ways that this is going to be automatically set up so that it can save you some time and in most cases you might actually have to set this one up yourself. But either ways, I think this is a win for Blender users as this is definitely going to change how you texture or how you work with texturing directly in Blender. And before we move on, let's look at the baking. So while you can fully create things procedurally, baking is an important part of this design. Now the reason for baking is so that you can be able to export your textures to game engines and on the other hand some tools and nodes like the filter nodes, 
and also the blow node might need you to bake them before you can export them or probably use them with some other rendering engines directly in Blender. So moving all the way down, let's look at the assets. So one of the cool things that we've just mentioned about is the idea that you can save these things up in your asset browser and use them. And the texture data block would be available in the asset browser for easy drag and drop into your layer stack. So Blender would ship with a library of procedural textures that can actually allow you create materials quickly. And to me, I think this is also something that is pretty cool. So this is more like it. For those who like to read up on the layer texture design, or probably you want to catch up with some of the strategic targets for 2022, then links to this is going to be in the description where you can check it out. And of course, for those who would like to look up on some of the other things that we've covered previously, like for example, you would like to get some add-ons that you probably missed, or you want to catch up with the sculpting updates that will be coming over to the next version of Blender. Links to that as well is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one's in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.